Oh, hi, Mikael. Um, I know you said you you had a plan before the window with Edu, but I was just wondering, has that plan changed or adapted, particularly given the run of results and, and players like Smith Rowe coming into the team, or is it the same plan you, you devised in December? No, it's not changed. Um, yeah, there are things that would be possible to do or we're expecting to do and we cannot do, and the opposite way around opportunities that can arise, but uh, more or less we are just seeking to that plan and uh, we haven't moved much from that. Uh, you touched on a bit there obviously you know with the you know the squad size coming down do you think I know before you said it was impossible to keep everyone happy do you think you will have a happier camp now that you've got players out the door? Well it would depend a lot on results uh, I think that uh, that's all the time uh, sometimes it's very related to the spirit of the team um, but yeah, at least to keep uh, the players that are here training with us um, available and with the possibility to use them, in my opinion, is the most important thing. And I think now that's going to be the case. And just lastly, um, someone who could possibly get some minutes at the weekend is, is Callum Chambers. I know he's been coming back from injuries. Has a decision been made about what's going to happen with him? And could he go on loan perhaps to, to get some action? I don't think um, that's going to happen. I'm really happy with Callum. Uh, He's gone through a really difficult period. Uh, he's worked so hard and he looks really good in the last few weeks in training. Uh, he's not even thinking about his knee right now. So we want to give him minutes uh, when we can because he's a player that, uh, that we believe in. Thanks, Mikhail. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Um, if we look at their situation together, it's obviously not been ideal that they haven't been playing football for, for six months or, or longer. And obviously they, you know, they've had those contracts that the club has had to settle, and it's been quite a difficult situation for everybody. How does the club make sure that nothing like that happens again? Well, sometimes it's difficult because um, the contracts uh, are really close, and you have to respect them while you sign them. And sometimes it's difficult to see how things are going to evolve in in six month time. So sometimes it's impossible to see what's going to happen in three years time. Um, we try to resolve those situations uh, early in the summer uh, to try to avoid uh, what we had. But sometimes it's, it's not possible as well. Um, this transfer window and the previous one really, uh, really complicated ones. And uh, I would have to assume that we have responsibility with those players and we have to, to respond to our obligations. And this is what we did uh, till the moment that uh, we found a solution for, for both parties. Do you think there are lessons to, um, to be learned, though, about what happened? Yes, you don't want to get in this position again, Nick, that's, that's for sure. But uh, not for the player, not for the club. But uh, it's happening more and more at every club. And this situation, you can see in other clubs, uh, things happening like that. Um, I think you have to have that communication open, obviously try to prevent them as much as possible. And if they happen, just make decision and don't try to delay a situation that is not working for, for much longer. Do you think it's it's going to help now that the club has got quite a stable executive team and you've got Richard Garlick joining, of course, to, to help with contractual things? And, and maybe in the last couple of years, which we've spoken about before, there has been a lot of upheaval at the top. Do you think it's going to help to have that stability now? Well, this is what we are looking for. Uh, obviously, a lot of things happened institutionally at the club um, and with some of the, the the big decision makers as well. And then we're trying to create a really strong team with different qualities that hopefully is going to give us uh, more uh, sustainability and success in, in our decisions. I just want to ask you about one other player who we haven't talked about too much recently, Eddie Nketiah. Um, I think he's only played nine minutes in the last month. And I know Laka has been playing very well and that kind of thing. But um, obviously, Eddie was really important in, in your first few months and you know, really pressing hard from, from the front, scoring some goals. Maybe it hasn't happened for him so much in this season. What does he need to do to push on? Well, I would take it more to the, to the last month because Eddie has played uh, quite a lot of games already this season. Um, and if you compare and you go back, uh, what he's done a year ago, so in one calendar year, why he's done and where he was, he was coming from Leeds, where he wasn't playing at all. We were going to send him on loan, and I decided uh, not to do it. And it's a big transformation. He's a young player. He's got some players competing with them in in that position, 
but I think he's done a lot and um, and his development in a year for his position if you compare to any other striker at his age in Europe you won't see many that have played that many minutes do you think he's still on on track if you like to be Arsenal as number nine for, for the long term and you make sure every day that he keeps on track the way he trains and the way he he pushes everybody so I'm not worried about that Okay, thank you very much, Michael. Good morning. Um, I just want to could just uh, briefly take you back to what Gary asked you about um, about Frank Lampard and uh, as a sort of a fellow manager, just that I don't know, not sympathy but empathy um, to to what he's going through. The Arsenal showed you, understandably and rightly so, great support. You know, things turn around very very quickly. It's an unprecedented season, isn't it? I mean, just just how important is it that that clubs back their managers and and, and support their managers, just from a managerial point of view? Well, I can only talk uh, about what I've experienced here and what I've experienced it was a, a full support in, in difficult times. Um, obviously, what you cannot support the work that you are doing behind the scenes and um, the methods that you apply, the values that you are trying to restore at the club and, uh, and the style and the model that you are trying to implement needs the support of results. And when they are not happening, everybody is there. Fortunately, if they see what you are trying to do is going to have rewards in the future and they are a bit patient, and most of the time it pays off. If everybody is convinced that we are doing the things uh, the right way. But I speak with a lot of managers and, and some of them have been in the game for over 30 years and they said, I never experienced something like that. This is a new game, it's new rules. There are so many things we cannot control. It's our, our hands uh, in a lot of moments. So I listen a lot to that because uh, we tend to put more and more pressure and demand ourselves a lot and it's a very strange league this season and you can see that in, in many teams. It feels there's a new generation coming through as well, isn't it? I think that we should embrace that exciting generation, shouldn't we? I think so and um, as well I've known Frank uh, for a few years as well and I spent some time with him. Um, and uh, yeah, I would like the club supporting and giving a chance um, he has a huge experience as a player, he's an icon over there. Uh, he's done some really good things, but he, you need time. And uh, if something we haven't had in this calendar year, it's time to work on anything. Listen, it's been such a long time since we've been at the tra training ground as, as the media to see the pictures hanging on the wall. But there's some lovely pictures of you with the FA Cup. I mean, the, the, the FA Cup, just purely on that, just must hold so many special memories for you. Not just what you you did obviously last summer uh, uh, as manager, but you, you know that winning that first time. How much a release valve was that? How much the was you know? It was uh, one of the nicest moments. Uh, it was ten years that the club didn't win a trophy. Ten years for Arsenal football not to win a trophy, and uh, and the unity that we created that year. Everybody was again putting pressure they won't do it it's been so long and we all wanted to do it for for our son as well um, because he really protected uh, all the players so it was uh, one of the biggest satisfaction as a group obviously to deliver that to the club and you could see the reaction of the fans on the parade the following day but for our son as well i think it was a, a moment of, of gratitude from all the players uh, towards him and he was a special I mean, it undoubtedly helped last season, didn't it? This season paved the way, create that kind of... Yeah, you know, I think it generated a lot of belief amongst the team uh, that we could compete against any team. And uh, the team was having a lot of difficulties in the last five years to win against any top teams. And we did it uh, in big sequences um, against them. And it was just a step uh, to do it consistently now for 10 months is a completely different story. And this is where we are right now, um, but it was great. And obviously, personally, to deliver that to the to the club in a really difficult year again when we started with this pandemic, just to be able to provide some happiness to our fans, it's, uh, it's all about the job, just to make some people happy and, and proud of what we do. Just finally, how, how important is it, or, you know, how difficult is it to make that step from being a cup team to be in a team that is consistent throughout throughout the campaign, that can achieve a target of a top four, pushing for the title, to achieve that sort of consistency? It's consistency in everything you do, in the way you train. Um, you have to train to win every single day to be better. Uh, 
to pay attention to a lot of details and to try to improve in every aspect of the game and to take your level to the excellence is the only way. The standards are so high in this league. Uh, in the last three years, I think the winning probability of, of a team was about 45%. Now the D teams is about 70-75, which is crazy. Um, and that's the standards, and you have to keep that's the standards. And first of all, you have to be able to get in training. You want to do it with the Okay, well, thanks so much. Good luck Saturday. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.